Stuffing like avocado, chickpea, uh, sprouts, all here. Then, ma'am, here we have maximum powder. 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 to Kapal Eats World. We had the Sunday brunch buffet at the Imperial in New Delhi in the Art Deco style all-day dining restaurant called 1911. The entrance to the restaurant is just off the main lobby and right away sets you back into British colonial times. The restaurant is most beautiful. The entire interior utmost regal and tasteful, and the pillared veranda our personal highlight. We fell in love with this setting when we had lunch at the veranda a few years ago and always enjoy being back. At this white marble table, back in time partition was discussed, so this hotel comes with a heavy legacy. 
You already saw that Mr. Anoop gave us a quick overview of the entire brunch spread. But now it's time to capture some of these beautiful dishes more closely and actually dig in. We aren't too keen on cold cuts, but it's worth mentioning that they looked really tempting and offered a great selection. So someone who's into that would certainly enjoy this fantastic looking spread. The selection of bread and cheese also didn't disappoint and everything was appealing. The salads were all stunningly presented. A great choice with enough veg and non-veg options. The only remark perhaps is that some of the salads were not well dressed. However, there was enough dressing on the side to add more flavor according to taste. Notice that the brunch spread is on the smaller side, but the atmosphere and quality of ingredients are the highlight. Brunch happens every Sunday, savoring on delectables with live piano music in the background in this most beautiful setting created an enduring ambience and is sure a must do. The South Indian health salad called Kasambari was a personal highlight, truly enjoyed it and something I would not just eat again and again but would like to try making myself sometime. I just need to get the right recipe. The grilled fish was delicious, the paneer tikka and veg tikka nothing too outstanding. The sheikh kebab alright and the lamb chops were cooked well and tasty but flavor was kept very continental, served with gravy.
was appetizing, but the sea fought all in all a bit rubbery on this occasion. Yet the prawns were decent and the cocktail sauce went well with it. The Golgapa section looked inviting. We tried the different flavoured waters. The green one was a standard type, however it was a bit plain. The yellow one was ginger flavoured and very pungent. And the red coloured water was on the sweeter side. And overall they were decent. The fillings came with a bit more non-traditional options such as avocado and sprouts, which is great. In any event, it's always a fun experience eating Golgappe. The best tasting hotel brunch Golgappe I recall were at the ITC Royal Bengal. Check out that brunch video on our Instagram at Couple Eats World. The Imperial New Delhi was opened in 1936 as the first hotel in New Delhi and has sustained its ambience of the bygone era. The hotel is more like a museum adorned by art and historical pictures, filled with history that exudes a heritage charm. Sushi was nice, as is often the case in hotel buffets. A decent variety, very well presented and always a welcome treat. There's something so satisfying watching sushi being prepared. Dim sum and bao were okay. One cannot expect Tim Ho Wan type level dim sum, but it's a nice snack for in between. That was clearly not enough chili sauce for him. The 
The silken tofu and Thai red curry were extremely tasty and would recommend both. The Singapore noodles, however, were a bit boring and in fact soggy. The Indian dishes were perhaps a bit too standardized to cater to a more international palate. However, the dal makhani had a great texture and consistency. And the vegetarian biryani was delightful, full of fragrance. Fun fact, we ordered the veg biryani once for lunch at the Imperial and still remember the experience. The beautiful fragrance that hit you after lifting the lid of the serving dish is still on our minds a few years later. The is great, we enjoyed the small delectables. Not only did they look beautiful, they also tasted well. Especially the coconut kaya cake stood out as well as the creme brulee. Whilst the sugar crust could have been better and the texture a bit creamier, the flavour was yum and we were sad that we didn't have seconds. They also cater to different dietary requirements and offer sugar-free and vegan desserts. They have an entire room dedicated to the desserts, no surprise given its lavish variety.
The Indian desserts were overall decent, but the pastries are the high point and overpowered the Indian sweets. The staff is polite and discreet. They are there when you need them, but not hovering over you the entire time. One of our highlights were the oyster mushroom pakore. We have never had those and the taste and execution were sublime. It is quite likely that we made a new memorable experience with those. Whoever came up with this idea, hats off to them. This brunch is absolutely relaxing. You don't have much noise from people, cutlery or hectic staff, as is often the case in larger brunch buffets. No canteen-like atmosphere, but rather very regal. After ambience and quality and don't mind a smaller buffet spread, this could be a wonderful experience for you. No long queues of hungry people trying to load their plates, but slow pace that makes this experience so worth your while. And we recommend spending an afternoon at this magnificent place. A special thanks to Mr. Anub and his colleagues for their dedication and their outstanding service. for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, please subscribe, comment and share our videos. Showing some love helps us to stay motivated. Thank you!